welcome you to this uh, service, this being the 11th Sunday after Pentecost, and it is a Sun Eucharist. Jesus said, You shall love the Lord of God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is the right. You shall love your neighbor as yourself, and these two commandments depend on you and the prophets. Brethren, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not enough. Let us therefore confess our sins, and we resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with our neighbor.
God for you and I to serve. And our reaction to what we are called to serve are the promises of God that when you go out to serve, He is always there for you. And that's why I entitled today's sermon as our call to serve the excuses that we give and God's promises. In the Christian world today, we have found ourselves with all kinds of excuses not to pay heed or to disobey the voice of God when He calls us. I think in our church today, we Christians have found a lot of excuses not to obey the voice of God. Some of us will say it is the preacher's job. Some will say it is not my gift to serve. Some will tell you. I have already served, let God has also do it. So we tell us, I am too busy, I am too tired, I am too young, like the man said, or I am too old to start. We are very, very skillful at giving all these experiences. So we tell you, I don't know, I didn't understand. I couldn't find the right tools in order to serve. Most Sundays, when we come to church or when we walk into the church premises, yeah, when I find Baby Lamini out there calling on some of us to have the first or second reading, sometimes I hear some excuses like, I don't have to have my eyeglasses. <laughs> I don't understand the dark type of Bible in here. Or I don't have my bed with me. These are the excuses that we hear every day. Today, in our church, we are seeing situations where we have continued to disobey the voice of God when He calls us to serve. Jeremiah gave us this kind of excuse as we read the first lesson this morning. When God called him to be the prophet, his excuses are often our excuses for not heeding the voice of God when he called us to serve. It has been said that excuses are the tools of incompetence. I did not write them. Some authors did. And those who specialize in giving excuses seldom do not go far. He that makes good, or he that is good for making excuses is seldom good for anything else. And he who excuses himself accuses himself. When you excuse yourself, you are doing what? Accusing yourself. Do you know that when you are called for a particular meeting once in a while and you give reasons for not coming to that meeting, do you find that any decision that is made in that meeting will be binding on you, irrespective of the fact that it may bind on you negatively? You find yourself in a row because you were not there to defend yourself or to speak out against what was happening. Have we ever wondered why the chicken that we eat every day seems to be the most slaughtered animal on earth? That chicken we eat every day during Christmas, during Easter, seems to be the most slaughtered animal. On earth. I will tell you, and this is a story that we used to hear from our elders when we are growing up. 
the story goes like this that animals, there was a time the animals called themselves for a meeting. The meeting topic was why are we always being slaughtered each time there was Christmas or there was Easter to celebrate? They keep slaughtering us. And they called meetings of all the animals to see how they can fight against the human beings. In that meeting, the chicken gave an excuse. I was too busy, I may not be able to attend, or I cannot attend because I was too busy doing a lot of things. So when they got to that meeting, they deliberated on what to do with human beings that we are slaughtering them. And they were deliberating what happened. They said, no, we cannot allow ourselves to be slaughtered anymore. Or let us know who can wait at the end of the day. They said, but they will still slaughter. As for them suggested, so who should we sacrifice to be slaughtered? And one of them said, okay. The chicken is not here. Maybe we can now make a decision that the chicken should be slaughtered. So every Christmas, the last said they will be slaughtering the chicken. When the chicken had about it, because he or it was not there and waiting. He said, Why are you why did you choose me? Why should I be a sacrifice or not? And they said, but they said any decision they make there is binding on you. And he didn't come. So that's why today, in every event that we go, the chicken was always being slaughtered. The same thing happens to each and every one of us. When we are not part of the system, or when we fail to hear the voice of God to come and serve, please don't accuse those that are serving that they don't know what they're doing. Because it's only when you get involved that you know what they are doing and be able to give them the right direction or the right uh, information that will help them to serve properly. You are accusing yourself when you fail to hear to the voice of God. Yes, this is equally happening here. Actually, we have a lot of problems in our church today. In most of our congregation, when you look around, I know that our children are right there at the Sunday school. When you look around, you find out that our demographic in church is changing. The population has changed. I will now find a lot of only old people in church. Where are the young ones? Why are we not bringing our children to church? Why are we failing to preach to them the right thing to do that they must come with you to church? I happen to have to ask one of them, one of us here, and you know what the while when you meet your neighbor, you say, oh, how is your children? Where is she? I wouldn't let them the person is not here. That was some, um, some, year, some years ago. So where is your child? So, uh, he said he was he woke up, was too tired to come. So I left him sleeping alone. And the same thing is happening when you keep allowing them to give you that excuse and you fail in our duty, the demographic will continue to shift. We keep finding only older generations in the church. And then the future of the church will continue to do what? So plan. Before you know it, there will not be any younger ones to take over from us. Because we have failed in our duty to carry out God's or begging our children to hear the word of God and grow in the Christian faith. Yet underneath all these excuses, we find out that the church is having a whole lot of problems, a harder and harder time finding our musicians. We have a student there. No one is willing to play the other. We have a lot of things to be done we can't find our children to take them on. We can't find some disputed teachers who are ready to serve. We can't find servants to help us here in the church. And other women workers are not there. These are all difficult issues we are facing today in the church. Underneath all this, we have two fundamental problems that I want to share with you. 
The first problem that we have in the church is that we have never really come to grips with what it means to be the disciples of Jesus Christ. To be great disciples of Jesus Christ, to be in the process of learning day in, day out. To put God's teaching and examples into practice in our daily lives. How many of us here are growing in confidence as Bible readers? That we are better in reading our Bible and studying our Bible than when we were yesterday and last year. How many of us have a sense that we are growing in our prayer lives, in our sense of connection with God, in our confidence in bringing our prayers to Him? How many of us? We are not really competent with knowing what our call to serve Jesus Christ is all about. The second problem that all this on the line is that we are too terrified like the other. We are too afraid to open our mouth to speak about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to people. We are too afraid to witness for Him. Another excuse will come up. What if I don't get it? I mean, what if I don't get it right? What if they start laughing at you? Who told you they will be laughing at you? Who told you that you will not get this right? Because at the end of it all, we have the promise of God that He will be here with us to the end. So why are we afraid? Why we should be having the confidence that God is here when we come to speak on His behalf? Having said this fact, about our calls, our excuses. Please come with me again to the Jeremiah that we read today. We read Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 to 8. And it said, Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I form you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Then I said, I have not God. Truly, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a God. That is, or that was Jeremiah's excuse. I do not know how to speak. I am only a God. But before he could finish, the Lord said to him, do not say I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. He followed by saying, Do not be afraid of them. Do not look at their faces, whether they are older people, or people that know it all, or the great teachers. For I am the one sending you. And dear to deliver you, says the Lord. That is God's promise. So when we begin to fear and begin to give excuses, the Lord says, You are not a boy. You are not a child. You are not an old man. You are not. You are not going to be saying or giving any excuse because I am here. I will be with you. I will deliver you. So you see, just like the, you see, the Jeremiah uh, is terrified, he actually reminds us of another prophet. Here, Jeremiah is saying, I'm just a boy. But remember, our prophet, Moses, if you remember him very well, in the burning bush, when God called him, he was 80 years old. When God told him to go, to the Egyptians and release his people. God speaks to him. God tells him to go to Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let his people go. And Moses, again, like Jeremiah here, offered all kinds of excuses. And he said, Who am I that I should go talk to Pharaoh? 
If they ask me which God, what shall I say? Suppose they don't believe me. But then eventually he blotted out the reason. He said, O oh Lord my God, I have not been eloquent. Neither in the past nor now. As you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. I do not know how to speak. That purpose is said. And he was about 85 years old. Today we are seeing Jeremiah who is in his youth. Also saying, I am only a boy. Remember the youth for those days are guided as people between the ages, not the children, but people between 12 to maybe 25 to 30 years. He was still a youth at that age. He was given as good as he was a youth. Moses at 30 years was also given an excuse. So excuse has been our problem for not taking on or heeding to the voice of God to carry out his work on earth. It's not all about age. It's not all about who you are. It's all about obeying the voice and acting out on the instructions of God. And he said, no matter who you are, I will be there. He always gave that promise that he will be there to guide you. And by this promise, we have the confidence. We are able to stand and speak. You may not notice that he is still supporting you, but with your faith and belief that he has promised, we are able to have the confidence to stand and speak. We are well equipped for that promise, and with the promise, you can get to where you are and be able to obey the call of God. And you know what? That promise is what is keeping most of us. As we believe and as we have faith in the promise of God, He will continue to be with you. He will continue to provide you with all the equipment, the tools that you need. Just heed to the voice. Just answer the call. Obey and be part of the system. If you also remember when Jesus Christ was sending out the disciples, he equally told them to go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that He has commanded. He added again at the end of that command, and He said, Remember, I am with you always to the end of age. So Jesus is with us. Jesus has invited each and every one of us to serve and trust. He is indeed with us whether we feel anything about it or not. In fact, we probably won't feel anything. What will happen is that we will all step out in faith, engage in conversation with people, speak to them, and you are doing God's sisters and brothers. If we in the church are going to have any future, and more importantly, if the message of the love of Christ is ever going to be passed on to a new generation, we are going to have to get over our fear of opening our mouths and speaking about God witnessing for Him. If we are Christians, we are disciples of Jesus Christ. Jesus called his disciples to fish for people. That was an integral part of the call in the Old Testament. So let us step out in faith and courage. Let us not be afraid to speak like Jeremiah and go out there to speak with confidence, knowing that God's promises is guiding us. That's why again, when we look at our pointer psalm this morning, our pointer psalm is a reminder, again, of who to trust. In that pointer psalm for today, it teaches us that even in our strong faith and devotion to God, it is no guarantee against problems and complications of life. Yes, we're going to face challenges, but know this, that the promise is still keeping you. The 
have equally affirmed that it is God's very favor to provide refuge, deliverance, and support. Even in verse 5 of our quarter start today, if we go through, you will find here you know, in verse uh, 5 that said, Oh, you, O oh Lord, you are my hope, you are my confidence, even from my youth upwards. So whether at your youth, whether at your old age, you are called to serve, there cannot be any escape. We have to learn from the service that we all need somebody to lead us. Not only as the service laid upon God from death, he even confessed that it is God who took him from his mother's womb. Again, the gospel we read this morning, we are asked, or we ask the question, when do you think you should be witnessing for God? When do you think you should be witnessing for God? And the answer is right there in Luke chapter 13 that we read this morning. And I mean 13 to 17 that we read this morning. When God, or uh, when our Lord has said that Jesus Christ was hidden, the lady on the Sabbath day, he was questioned, why are you hidden on the Sabbath day? The lesson here that we learned is that you cannot say you are only coming on Sunday to start, or you have only the Sunday to preach to your people. We said we are saying you can preach to people, you can talk about Christ any day, any time, in your workplace, in your office, be it Saturday, Sunday, Monday, or Friday. Any day, any time, anyone, young or old, can preach, can walk, can serve God. As I conclude, brethren, I would like you to say this with me as you raise your voice to speak. And I want you to say this after me. Because that is what we are called. Please repeat after me in your loud voice. I know who I am. 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 I know how to speak. 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 I am neither too old. Neither too old. Nor too young. Nor too young. To hear to the voice of God. To hear to the voice of God. Any time, any day. Any time, any day. I will speak. And hear his voice. I will seek and hear his voice. And I can do all things. 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 Through God who strengthens me. Through God who strengthens me. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
by your tears and through your mercy, teach us your ways and write them on our hearts, so that we may follow faithfully the path you show us. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our prayer. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, grant us a better faith to try to enter ever more deeply into your blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation. By witness of your sins, gather from every corner of this world, enter your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Eternal Lord, you have founded your church and promised that she will remain forever. Bolster her confidence in your way and guide her clergy and leaders to the path of righteousness. That she will declare your glory among all nations. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you have called fathers to bring forth their children in your fear and love. Sacrifice and sustain them through your work that they would lovingly disciple their children as a social for your own divine fear and your baptized children. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, prayer. O oh Lord, grant wisdom integrity and skills of our king and queen Lord, the parliament and cabinet, our judiciary and all those in authority, that in the exercise of their lawful duties, justice will be maintained, the innocent defended, wickedness restrained, corruption, corruption, Liberty of hell and conscience respect. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you trust in those who will be loved. Teach your family, Lord, to those enduring the afflictions of this life. For all this comes from your own hand. Guide all who suffer in body and soul and bring them to your prayer. Grant of healing by the stripes of Christ and meet all our needs according to your riches in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Find us in your holy presence with a crying and comfortable and receive the glory of the Son to face a better world and the blood of heaven. Let the blood of Christ thoroughly bless the earth of Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, we give you thanks for all the saints who have gone before us. Grant that we will die to ourselves and enter with Christ into the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to join with all the angels in the festival gathering and to be numbered in the first one who are enrolled in heaven. Perfected in the righteousness of Christ and abiding forever in his new creation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear us, most merciful Father, in this our humble request, which we offer unto you in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son and Lord. To you, O Lord, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, your glory, honor. Worship and praise now and even the end of all days. Amen. Amen. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and life to your praise. Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always.